This is Pet Life Radio. Let's talk pets. Everyone cheering, super smiling. This message of unconditional love. Boys in the Air Force, super smiling. Here to save the day. Kindness is the way. We begin now. Hi, everybody. I'm Megan Blake, dog trainer and the pet lifestyle coach. You're now on a super smiley adventure where you come for pet information, inspiration, and integration of all things you can use and incorporate to enhance your life with your pet. Our show here is named after my dog, Super Smiley, a rescue dog who was abandoned three times on the streets of downtown Los Angeles. He survived, and he inspired the world's first kindness program, Teaching Kids Kindness Through Pets, the Super Smiley Project. We traveled the country speaking to thousands of kids about the lessons pets can teach us. As for me, I'm the pet lifestyle coach and dog trainer, and I work as more than just a dog trainer. I have four lifestyle areas, training, travel, and adventure, exercise and health, and dog wisdom. What can we learn from them? How can dogs inspire us? And our guest today is so perfect for this adventure. He's one of the brilliant actors on one of CBS's top series, SEAL Team. And right now, it's my very favorite show on television. But what many people don't know is that Justin Melnick is a real-life police officer who trained the dog he works with on SEAL Team to work in real life as a police canine as his narcotics detection dog. And there's more. Justin's also served as a combat photographer in Afghanistan. He is the real deal. I'm beyond honored and excited to introduce you all to Justin Melnick. Welcome, Justin. Thanks for having us today. Say hi to everybody. Hey, baby. Hey, baby. We're on Zoom and I can see Dita. She's so beautiful. But Justin, before we even start, I want to thank you for your service in Afghanistan and here in the United States as a well, police I was, officer. I wasn't in the military. I was a freelance photographer. So you can say that thank you for the men and women of our country that gave up their children's birthdays and anniversaries and went over there. But I appreciate it. Absolutely. We salute all of them. But I also want to thank you um, for your service as a police officer. Can I thank you for that? course just a job <laughs> thank no you're you're so humble thank you so much now and you've already had a super full fascinating and unbelievably unique path in your career so let's just start a little closer to the beginning of seal team work because of your background you were initially brought on seal team as a consultant on the show military consultant is that right tell us what that is and what you did we ended up on the show because they needed a dog and, okay. Okay. And then the dog was supposed to be another character's dog on the show. And when I got there, they ended up just saying, you should handle the dog. So I yeah. said, it doesn't involve having to know how to act. They're like, you'll figure it out. <laughs> so, um, so that's how the pilot started. And by the end of the pilot episode, the creator of the show, Ben Cavall, named my character. So when the show got picked up, I got a call from CBS asking, you know, how I feel about moving out to California and, and doing working on the show. And then uh, they brought me on as a consultant to do all the equipment for the show. There you go. That's what I was referring to. Tell us about that, that working just as a consultant for that. Tell us about that. You know, it, it's, it's really fun because we've got the best props guys in the business working on the show. But the gear that we use is very specific to a very small percent of our elite units in the military. So I was able to gain access to them for them. So it just was really fun. It was not constricted to government contract purchasing and, and we could kind of equip our team with the best gear out there. And so were you working, uh, give us the timeline. Were you, were you working as an actor on the series um, while you were consulting at the same time or did one see the other? I've been in every single episode. Dita has been in most episodes and it just kind of, you know, we never put the dog in the show. If we don't need a dog, if the mission dictates that we need a dog, we'll bring the dog. Everybody loves seeing Dita and it's magical to see her on screen. She's a one in a million and she uh, is now stretched out on the floor, sleeping on my fleece. Yes. And I love this, that people don't realize they, they know she's a dog actor. They know that you're an actor on the show, but she is your personal dog. What's it yeah. like to work with your personal dog on a television set like this? It, it, you know, forget TV show. Imagine getting to go to work every day with your best <laughs> friend and, you know, the magical thing about Dita is she turns it on when it's time to go to work, whether it's wow. on a police job or on playing a military working dog. But when she doesn't have her gack on, her vest and, you know, her gear, all she loves to do is play with people. So 
you know, she runs around, everyone keeps tennis balls for her in their desk and she goes to everybody and plays with everybody and the amount of joy and love she brings and spreads. It changes a work environment, whether you're on a TV show or in, a, in an office. Dogs reduce stress and most people, I've, in my experience, have enjoyed having, having her and other dogs around. So it's really nice. Absolutely. As I mentioned at the beginning of the show, Smiley has a program teaching kids kindness through pets. They, they teach us so much. And I'm a big fan of Dita's. And whenever she does go into a dangerous situation on the television series, I always tell myself, she's just a dog actor. She's just a dog actor because we don't want her character to get hurt. She, is, she adds so much excitement to the television series, right? You know, I, it's not acting for her. It's all real. We don't fudge scenes. If Dita's looking for an explosive odor, she's actually searching for a synthetic narcotic odor. So, so we'll place odors out and let her search for them for the first couple takes and keep moving them around in different places to get all the cuts that they need. And then we'll put it at the indication spot where we want them to indicate, you know, that there's an IED or something. And then she'll go and she'll indicate. It's real. It's a hundred percent real for her. It's, you know, one of the things that I always was able to justify on the show was this was the best training that a dog could get. And, you know, I'm not, a, I'm a dog handler. I'm not a trainer. I can work with my dog, but I can never take a new dog and get it to the level of Dita. You know, that's Dita had five main trainers throughout her existence that all specialized in very certain things, which, which helped her become the well-rounded dog that she is. I love this. And you just touched on what I want to talk about next is that well, I want to emphasize what's so interesting here is that Dita isn't just trained to be a dog actor doing these in quotes behaviors. She is a real life narcotics detection dog for police departments. And we want to hear more about that real life work and her training right after this word from our way cool sponsors. Smiley, can you wait? <coughs> Good boy. Pets are part of the family. Make sure you can always afford the quality health care they need with Easy Pet Check, a nationwide pet insurance alternative. With Easy Pet Check, you'll save up to 75% on all your pet's health care at any licensed veterinarian in the U.S. Easy Pet Check accepts all dogs and cats regardless of pre-existing conditions. Visit EasyPetCheck.com. That's the letters EZPetCheck.com. Taking care of your pet can be easy with Easy Pet Check. Let's Talk Pets on PetLifeRadio.com. Everyone cheering, super smiling, this message of unconditional love. And we're back on a super smiley adventure with Justin Melnick, brilliant actor from CBS's SEAL team, war dog handler on the show, and real life police officer. Welcome back, Justin. Thanks. <laughs> and Dita, Dita's there with you. So, Justin, tell us a little bit more. Go, where is she? There's the baby. Tell She's just down there <laughs> crashed out right now. In the Everybody, I can see the Zoom and, and Dita's just so sweet. She's very different from on the show because on the show, she's the alert Belgian Malinois, you know, searching out the narcotics, waiting to apprehend someone. And right now she's lying down on the floor. The back she just spent about two and a half hours running around playing catch and swimming <laughs> in the pool. So she's she's just having chill time right now. I love that. So Justin, Dita works as a real life narcotics canine. Is that correct? Will you tell us about her, her career? That's her pedigree. She's never gone in service for detection at this point. Okay. Just okay. because right before she was supposed to go in service, the show ended up happening. Oh. Okay. Um, so what her main role at our police department is now is basically school resource officer. We'll go into the schools, we'll do canine integration with the children and teach them how to approach dogs and what to do if they see a dog on the street. And, you know, Dita has her cute little routine where she helps the kids do math and she'll answer math <laughs> questions and she'll answer whatever questions the kids want with a cute little bark. But really, you know, working in law enforcement over the past five years has been very challenging. You know, people have not had the best response to law enforcement over the past five years. So it's been really nice in our community being able to use the show and her fame to bridge the gap with our community and really get our community engaged with our department. And without a strong relationship between a community and their police department, it's really hard to do good policing. The community is so much of that equation. And if the community doesn't like your department or trust your department, you're not going to get much done. But being able to bridge that gap and open up relationships and friendships 
has been such a gold, a golden egg. I love this. And as is the theme on our show, what you've already mentioned several times is how dogs can bring people together. I like to say that dogs can communicate on a level that humans can't even do. They can be better teachers than humans because they communicate on an energetic and on a pure level. That's what you're saying, right? Yep. Yep. So she is actually being an ambassador for the police department. Could we say that in the neighborhood? Yeah, I I think she's a pretty good ambassador for for all police dogs and military working dogs out there right now. The amount of awareness and, and charity drive she's done to help our military working dogs. We're about to launch a whole new initiative coming up in a month with MWDTSA, Military Working Dog Charity. Tell us about that. And an affiliate uh, called Rack Specs who makes goggles and hearing protection for dogs to do a whole drive for military working dogs deployed. But, you know, she's she's raised enough toys to give every military working dog in our armed forces Christmas presents over the last couple of years. And it's been really, really cool watching how you can take a platform like a TV show, which Mm -hmm. in the end of the day, it's a cool job, but it's, it's just the job and really focus and funnel it into such a broad spectrum to help, which has been such a blessing. Absolutely. Once again, that's our theme right here, Super Smiley Adventure, how dogs can lead us on amazing adventures. Justin, when you first got Dita, did you have any idea that all of this was going to unfold for both of you? (laughs) No way. No way. When I first got her, I didn't even have a house. I drove a motorcycle. I lived in my buddy's place. And then- Like, I remember having one of my buddies who makes all the equipment for SEAL Team 6 make me a custom backpack so I could drive her around on my motorcycle. I was going to ask you how you did that. That was going to be one of my questions. Cool. Yeah. If you look on our Instagram, there's a cute picture of her on the motorcycle in my backpack with her goggles on. (laughs) You know, no concept that this was even close to reality. But I guess I would say in my life, I live by a couple mottos. One is never say no unless it's illegal or immoral. And always give everything 100%. Go all in all the time. I see that you take the path. When a path is offered, if it's, you just jump right on 100%, right? Is that what you said? Yeah, Yeah, 100%. So so I love going back to SEAL Team with Dita. Oh man, there's some scenes that I remember. Like there was one where she just jumped in a, I guess it was like a Jeep in a vehicle, jumped right through the window to apprehend someone. Do you remember that? She was like a little torpedo. Season two, episode 14, I believe. Yeah. And I want to describe this to everybody. I mean, literally she's on the ground and she turns into this little torpedo, boom, right in the window. Now, is that because she was going after her scent? How did you get her to do that? How does she love to That was a really complicated one because we had three dudes in the car. Okay. One dude's arm was hanging out of the window. You know, both the dudes in the driver and the passenger seat were playing dead. And the dude in the back seat had a hidden bite suit underneath his underneath his clothing. So I cheated that one for safety. You know, to send her through a car window is no problem. I just didn't want her to go through the wrong car window. Right, right. And hit a dude that didn't have protective gear on. So yeah. What I did is I brought her up to the car window right before we rolled. I had the dude kind of taunt her through the back window, letting her know. Yeah. And then I brought her back, had him reach outside the window, taunt her, hit the window a few times and then disappear into the car. And then, uh, then gave her her attack command. Her command. Boom. Yeah. So, you know, in Hollywood, you have to guarantee with 100% that you can pull it off. There's no margin for error at all. That's right. So... So that was one of the times where I kind of cheated it just because it was a safety for safety stuff. Oh, man, but it looked perfect. That's why I called it out. It was just it was outrageously beautiful the way she. Oh, yeah. That window. Our, it our was... cameramen are awesome. You know, Uh huh. our cameramen have gotten to know Dita. They love her. They trust her. She'll, she knows all of them. She'll move through them like they're not even there. Really? Oh, yeah. yeah. That is so cool. That is just so, so cool. And then there was another scene where she climbed a ladder. Tell us about that. (laughs) Tell us about that one. (laughs) That was probably my favorite. That was uh, season one, episode 14, I believe. Okay. She, uh, the way we cheated that is I can direct her by lasers. Oh, cool. 
Okay. Uh, like, so if we're in a hallway, I can put a laser on a doorway and have her go. She knows how to open up doors. So she'll go open the door and go check a room. Yeah. So I use lasers to direct her to all different parts of outside the building to check first and then called her back and we cut. And then uh, I put someone with a bite sleeve up on the roof and had them climb through the window. And then I gave her her attack command and she climbed up and jumped through the window. And then all the interior stuff was filmed on a soundstage. So those were actually two entirely different days. Yeah. Okay. So, you know, it's, it's not about training your dog. It's, it's, it's about knowing your partner and knowing what motivates your partner and how to get your partner to do what you need them to do. Absolutely. So I want to make sure all the listeners understand this. Dita actually climbed up the ladder, right? Yeah. Did you know she could do that or were you just? Yeah, of course. Okay. Okay. So you, you, okay. It was just so amazing to say, and she just went so fast. She was like, boop, 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 boop. Oh yeah. Dita Dita can (laughs) climb ladders and open fire doors and yeah, wow. she's she's a clever little lady. She is. And you just you hit on something I was just going to ask about. You said you have to know your partner. So let's talk about the trust and the bond that you two must have with each other to do these things. Can you just share that with us? I mean, we do, you know, our specialty is high angle canine deployment. So it's yeah. getting dogs in and out of helicopters, off and on buildings, repelling off the side of buildings. And it's just a trust thing, you know. I mean, sadly, sometimes things go wrong, but it's only happened once out of everything. Generally, it's about trusting your partner and your equipment. Yeah. And I just want to relate that a little bit to our listeners because none of our listeners are anywhere near what you're doing. Smiley's actually a dog actor too, but the most he's ever done is work in Hallmark movies playing Raquel Welch's dog. So he does not <laughs> he does not leap from building to building, although he does wear a red cape, his super smiley cape. <laughs> so um, as far as people at home, don't you agree that that is so important just for the household pet to have that bond, that trust, to be consistent with your dog? Can you talk to the listeners a little bit as to what they can do with their dog, just the bond, the love. Having a dog is is having a wife, if you're a male and your dog's a female, or a daughter and a sibling and an employee all wrapped up into one thing. Wow. There are times I ask her to do some pretty crazy stuff. And I always say that I, I'd never ask her to do anything that I wouldn't do right beside her. We've had some moments where we've been super scared together and we've worked through it. And we've had moments where we've been incredibly exhausted together and we've worked through it. We've uh-huh. had moments where we've been incredibly cold and uncomfortable together and or incredibly hot and uncomfortable together. But, you know, the thing is, is, is like any teammate is if you're there doing it with them, you develop a bond and a trust. And Yeah. And the more adventure, I know I've used that word a million times that you have with even a human, with an animal. I also have horses and we did all kinds of things together. They're kind of crazy. We actually, my horse was out in Santa Clarita for a while. Do y'all shoot out there? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Cause I recognize the mountains where you are. Like I rode out there. That's where I used to ride. So that bond and just doing with them, having them trust you that you will go with them. Right. Can you tell us, can you tell us a story? I know I asked about the ladder and jumping through the window, but do you have something fun that you can share or interesting or something you learned working with her? A story? Dogs read off of our energy. They go. read off the yeah. energy of everyone else. Um, you know, I've skydived both my dogs. I jumped both Pepper and Dita. And for me, you know, even though they're not Navy SEAL dogs, they represent military working dogs on camera. So for me, out of respect to those dogs, it is 100% the most important thing for my dog to be able to do everything that their dogs do as good as them and have all those experiences because otherwise I, you know, I don't feel like you're putting in a hundred percent. So I skydived with both of the dogs and they loved it and had a great experience. And you, know, you can tell because but when they hit the ground, they're not cowering there. You know, they're ready. Yeah. To, their demeanor, their energy doesn't change. You know, I remember Dita, once I got, once our free fall ended and we popped our canopy, I brought some food up and she kind of perched up in her little jump taco. And, you know, we were at 5,000 feet oh, watching man. the sunset. And she was just eating food out of my hand. And dogs don't eat when they're nervous. So that's how I knew she was fine. That is amazing. That's amazing. And I really think that she had a positive experience skydiving because we were in a recreational plane jumping where everybody there had thousands of jumps. Everyone is excited for it. She wasn't picking up on any nervous right. energy. Yeah, yeah. 
You know, whereas if we were in a load with everyone that's first jumps and that people are nervous and scared, I think she would have picked up and not really enjoyed her experience. Yep. There you go. When I first have a dog training client, the first thing I tell them is dogs communicate with energy and body language. I know you would give that the thumbs up, right? A hundred percent. hundred percent. And Justin, let's talk about you for a minute. After being a police officer and riding around your motorcycle, um, what is it like being an actor with these amazing cast members on SEAL team? Just talk a little bit about your acting experience. So it's really cool. I, I've worked a lot of jobs in my life. I've been everything from a gas station attendant to uh, working in restaurants and nightclubs around the world to photography, to fashion photography, to combat photography. And I'll tell you, it's not just the cast, but it's the crew, it's the writers, it's the producers, the directors. Working with these 300 people for the past four and a half years has been one of the most incredible, inspiring experiences of my life because I'm around a group of people that A, have become family, but B, don't know what no means. They don't know what I, we can't do that means. Yeah, yeah. No matter how crazy the script is that gets written, no matter how complex the scenes are, from the set decorators to the people who light it to the people who portray the characters, everybody gives 100%, 100% of the time. And the stuff that we accomplish and achieve is so rewarding. I can't say enough wonderful things about these people. And forget just the acting side of it. Everything that these people do on the side to help veteran-based charities is just so inspiring. I don't know. So many people get lost in Hollywood. I think, I think it's a, I think overall Hollywood could be a little bit hard to regain who you are in, but the people that I'm around every day, bring you back to the ground and keep you refreshed because they're good people and they're wonderful people. And it's just so awesome. That is absolutely the best. And like I said, it is by far my favorite show on television. So maybe I'm also picking up on that level of just genuine, the genuine people and the energy there. And Justin, I could talk with you all day long. We only have one more segment. I want to hear more about you and Dita right after this break. Smiley, can you wait? Good boy. Take a bite out of your competition. Advertise your business with an ad in Pet Life Radio podcasts and radio shows. There's no other pet-related media that is as large and reaches more pet parents and pet lovers than Pet Life Radio. With over 7 million monthly listeners, Pet Life Radio podcasts are available on all major podcast platforms. And our live radio stream goes out to over 250 million subscribers on iHeartRadio, Radio.com, TuneIn, Stitcher, and other streaming apps. For more information, on how you can advertise on the number one pet podcast and radio network, visit PetLifeRadio.com slash advertise today. Let's talk pets. Let's talk pets. On Pet Life Radio. Pet Life Radio. PetLifeRadio.com. Hi, I'm Amanda Seifert, and I am on the Super Smiley Adventure. Everyone's here is Super Smiley. This message of unconditional love. And we're back on a super smiley adventure with Justin Melnick and Dita, the canine team from CBS's SEAL team. So, um, Justin, for me, I believe I know that animals are healers and teachers, and I've learned so many different things from each one of my pets. I mentioned I've had horses and dogs and cats. So what has Dita taught you personally in your, in your heart? Everything. I mean, I'd never had a pet before having Dita. I never had a dog. I never had anything. It's interesting because 98% of the mistakes, 99% of the mistakes I make, she's always right on. You know, oh, it's, it's, wow. it's learning. I think the best thing she taught me is how to trust. Just trust your partner. I don't have all the answers all the time, but these dogs are about right 100% of the time. Their instinct. Yeah. Trust. They trust you, but you learn to trust them. We learn to trust them as well. Right. I believe that they have senses that with our, in quotes, intellect, our mind, we've kind of dulled the real deals every once in a while. Do you see what I'm saying? You know, just having a day in day out best friend that I can have these wild adventures with. We live life to the fullest together. And man, we almost died together the other day, but we, uh, you know, we get through it together and we keep putting our paws in front of us. That's 
Awesome. And, and she has, she, you've mentioned your platform on SEAL team. Both of you have such a big platform. I know she speaks in schools or I say speaks, she's present there in schools. What do you think she would want to tell the world if she could actually tell us something? What, what would her message be? Deets, you're way wiser than me, sweetie. What do you want to say? What did you say? She is zonked out right now. <laughs> That's a really good question. I think watching her behavior all the time, is Dita is a big believer in loving and Uh she loves everybody and she loves to bring joy to people. Whether it's a two-year-old that wants to pull on her ears and tail, she'll lay down and totally tolerates it. Or, you know, whether it's an adult who's having a bad day and she just senses it and she'll walk over and put her head in their lap. Yeah. Yeah. It's awesome. She spreads so much love to everybody, which is probably one of my favorite things about her. And what you just described also to me, the word that came to me was that she's present. She really is present with everybody. And that is certainly a lesson that we humans could take to heart. Just just being like you talked about walking your walk, one foot in front of the other. And speaking of having a voice and mission for the world, you, Justin, um, you've worked with the school safety programs. And I read about end of watch to aid families of fallen police officers. How can we help your missions or keep up with you or, or support you? What do we do? So I started End of Watch before the whole Hollywood thing kicked off. And then I kind of just didn't do anything with it because I realized I could help way more with other charities by helping get behind 15 other organizations than just having my own. In the end of the day, as long as we're giving and we're helping and being part of the solution, that's all that matters. So End of Watch doesn't really exist anymore, but you know, people want to get out there and look for their local law enforcement charities to help families of fallen law enforcement officers. I encourage that these, these men and women are out there every day, keeping us safe in our, in our neighborhoods. And, and they're willing to put a, their life on the line, no matter what the public's view on law enforcement is, they're still putting on their uniform and going out there every day and giving a hundred percent. I love, I love that you said that our local, wherever we can give help and support. I love that, Justin. And thank you again for your service as a police officer and for bringing Dita to the world on so many levels, the entertainment, the service, the inspiration. And um, thank you for everything you do. Thank you for joining us on a super smiley adventure, Justin. Thank you. Thanks for having us guys. Take care. (laughs) Thank you, Justin. And to all of you, everybody, you can reach out to me here at Pet Life Radio or at Megan Blake official. Com. I'm Megan Blake, dog trainer and the pet lifestyle coach. And everybody, I teach a free group dog training class on Zoom. It's Sundays at 4.30 Eastern time. You all can meet with me live. I started this as a project as a public service during the pandemic. We've been covered on Spectrum News and it's working really, really well for all the pandemic pups and for everybody who joins us. You can email me for the Zoom link and you can find everything I'm doing, all my dog training videos, social media. It's all on my website at meganblakeofficial.com or at webeginnow.com. Thank you again to the amazing Justin Melnick and to beautiful, beautiful girl Dita. Thank you to our super producer, Mark Winner, and for our fabulous bumper music that he composed and performs. And to everybody who loves their pets, thank you all for joining a super smiley adventure. And remember, wherever you are with your pets, we begin now. Let's Talk Pets, every week on demand, only on PetLifeRadio.com.